today. I'm really excited to be collaborating with uh, SWE and connecting you all with our research park companies. Before we uh, dive into the panel, I did want to provide a quick overview of uh, research park for those who aren't as familiar or may have heard of it, but not really sure what it is. Um, so um, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Jenny Kim. I am the assistant director for of talent or for talent at Research Park. My main role is to help all of the companies in the Research Park to grow their, their workforce, both student and full time. So I help them to connect with the campus and the community. And then on the flip side of that, making sure that the campus and community are also aware of all of the great opportunities available in the Research Park. Um, so that events like this, I try to coordinate so that you can hear directly from the employers um, as to what they're looking for and what their operations are all about. So um, the research park is a technology hub that's right on campus. So it helps to cultivate startups and accelerate corporate innovation. There are actually over 120 companies in the research park that range from those small startups to large Fortune 500s. The best thing about having Research Park on campus is that these companies can provide internships all year round. So you can work part time during the school year, fall and spring, about 10 to 20 hours a week. It will depend on the company, but you can work part time while you're taking your classes. So you don't have to take a year off to go do a co-op. Um, you can get experiential learning and real professional experience while you're in school. And then during the summer, they offer full time. Uh, positions. Now, again, this will vary by company. They do typically hire, though, freshmen to PhD, domestic and international students, students from all majors and all colleges. It's really more about skills and experience-based hiring than just about the majors. So I encourage you during your conversations today to really um, talk about the skills that you bring or what your interests are and really try to find out um, from the employers you know, what is it that they're looking for? What really helps you uh, to stand out? All the internships in the research park are also paid and paid uh, very well. Um, and during the school year or when we're able to be in person, um, the research park is easily accessible by bus, bike, and uh, rare rarity on campus, but there is free parking as well if you have a car. So that's really exciting um, uh, uh, resource that's available to you. Um, at the research park. And if you are interested in seeing what is currently available on the job board, you can go to the uh, research park uh, job board for current uh, postings. I'm going to put some resources in the chat. So the research park job board is exclusive to research park companies. So um, if you see a job on that board, you know it's in the research park. Um, all companies hire independently, so you do have to apply to each company separately. So just follow the instructions on that job board. Uh, tomorrow from noon to one, we are actually having another employer panel if you're interested in hearing from some different companies. That is in partnership with the Career Center. So that is from 12 to one via Zoom. And you can register for that at go.illinois.edu slash research park panel. And I put that, that is not a URL. Sorry, I, bet I need to add the HTTP portion, but um, feel free to register there for that panel. And next week, if you're still looking for an internship uh, this spring or in the summer or the following fall, we are having a Research Park Career Fair on Tuesday, March 2nd, 3 to 7 p.m. This will be virtual via Zoom. Uh, this QR code will actually take you to our Zoom registration link and you can you register for one Zoom link that's kind of like the lobby. So you'll join there and we'll tell you, uh, give you instructions on how to meet with other companies. But um, you'll, you can look forward to meeting um, our sponsors, P&G Smart Lab, Corteva, Agri Sciences, Granular, and Motorola Solutions. Um, and I do know that uh, AbbVie will also be there. And I'm um, not sure if Caterpillar has signed up just yet, but we're hoping to, um, get as many of the research park companies uh, there as possible so that you can have uh, more conversations with them. Really good opportunity to not only look for an, an internship, but also to make a connection and just kind of start building that relationship. That's one thing that is really great about research park is that it's here on campus, it's not going anywhere. So it's a really good opportunity to connect and have multiple touch points with these companies. 
If you're interested in the intersection of technology and ag culture, we have an Ag Tech Innovation Summit coming up on Wednesday, March 10th. So there's gonna be great panels throughout the day. But in the evening from 4.30 to 6 p.m., we are also having a specific um, agriculture and technology ag tech innovation career mixer. So this is an opportunity to connect with companies that are using technology to transform the agricultural industry. So um, check, out, check that out on our website. I also put a link in the chat to our calendar and that calendar of events will keep you up to date on all of the things that um, we have coming up where you can connect with employers. If you do have any other questions, feel free to email us at uirp-jobs at illinois.edu and myself or an HR intern will respond to any questions that you have. Um, you can also sign up for our student newsletter where we'll send you, uh, keep you up to date on our different events. That's weekly during heavy recruitment season. And then that switches to monthly, um, probably in for, for March and April. And then we're on social media. So feel free to follow us on our, the different social media channels. Again, staying up to date on you know, what the different companies are up to. And um, Instagram is very student focused. So that's a good one to follow and uh, stay, would try to put out interesting job posts and, and things like that. So feel free to follow us on social media as well. All right, so I am going to stop talking because I know you want to hear from the employers. So uh, we are really lucky to have a nice mix of uh, some of the companies that are in the research park. Um, I will let them introduce themselves um, further, but we have uh, representatives from Abbott, AbbVie, Caterpillar, and Motorola Solutions. And ADM was supposed to be here tonight, but unfortunately there was a, an emergency and so she was not able to join us today. But April um, from ADM, is we'll, we will share her contact information. And she said, anybody who's interested can, can just reach out directly. Um, but we still have a great panel. So let's go ahead and why don't we start with Craig and Motorola Solutions. If you could please introduce yourself and your company, tell us a little bit about what your company does, how, you know, what might be different that you're doing at Research Park, and then you know, what is your position and your background. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Great to be here. I'm Craig Evitson. I'm the research director for Motorola Solutions here at our Research Park office. I'm going to actually let my partner, Mary Kate Bryant, talk about what we do as Motorola. Um, but what I'll tell, and then I'll come back and tell you a little bit about what we do at Research Park. Um, my background: I'm a software engineer. I graduated in computer science from the University of Illinois. I bleed orange and blue, and uh, and I've had a number of different jobs in the company, all mostly technical related until they asked me to come down here and head up our facility here. So it's dream job and I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Mary-Kate, why don't you tell them what Motorola does and then I'll tell them what we do specifically at Research Park. Sounds good. Hi everyone, my name is Mary-Kate, like Craig said. I am the University Relations Lead for Motorola Solutions and to tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, so there's, you know, portions of our business but they all connect with mission critical communications. So if you think of land mobile radio, so um, the radio that police officers and firefighters use to talk to one another. We also do a command center software suite. So if you think of 911 call handling or um, computer aided dispatch, that's kind of under that bucket. And then um, additionally, video security and analytics, which um, is kind of newer to the organization that we've um, you know, it's grown into that part of the business through a number of acquisitions. Um, but like I said, it all kind of comes back to mission critical communications. Um, and I'll let Craig, like you said, share about what we do specifically at Research Park. Yeah, and as Mary Kate said, we're, we're, so we're a high tech software company at our heart. That's what we are in cloud computing, real time embedded apps, mobile applications. We do a lot in cybersecurity and data science, analytics, machine learning is a big part. We have, you know, big areas that are, are working on that right now. And our students work on projects all over the corporation. We're an international corporation. Um, and, you know, so we are working on projects all over the world. And Everything that we do here is related to something that's gonna be in production one day. And, and so why are we here? We are here primarily to find amazing talent like yourself. I know the reason we came down here is to find as many amazing engineers and convert them to full-time Motorola's as possible. Um, but we also do a lot of great work here. We have inroads with the university. And we also wanna make sure everyone knows we're not the cell, cell phone company. We are Motorola Solutions about mission critical communications. 
All right, great. Thank you very much. And Tim? Hi, I'm uh, Tim Chapman. I'm with uh, Abbott, um, and I'm the uh, site director here for Research Park. And um, what we do is we hire students such as yourself to work on projects with uh, a no number of our division, different divisions throughout Abbott. We have um, nutrition, uh, our vascular de uh, department, our um, diagnostics, uh, rapid diagnostics. And actually I have a couple of, uh, unfortunately I'm not, I'm not from the University of Illinois. Um, I've got my background is I'm in uh, food science uh, from uh, the Ohio State University. Uh, I have a couple of uh, alumni here with me, um, uh, Steph uh, Zembru and Xenia uh, Diaz. And I'll let them, uh, Steph, if you wanna go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Steph and I actually graduated just last year from U of I with a degree in bioengineering. Um, so I worked uh, at Research Park from my sophomore year all the way up to my senior year. So I started with a summer internship there and then just kind of continued working uh, during the school year as well. And now I'm a full-time Abbott employee and I'm working at the new Bionax now plant um, that's in Gurney, Illinois, that's manufacturing the five minute COVID test. Um, so I really credit um, where I am now to research part just because it kind of helped me um, get to know more about the company and um, just know more about their program and everything they have to offer. Hi, I guess, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. I've been having problems all day with my WebEx <laughs> and Teams. So now this. Um, my name is Zina Diaz. Um, I actually never worked in Research Park. I always dreamed when I was uh, passing by, um, you know, that it'd be awesome to work there. Um, but I did uh, intern throughout my time at U of I with Abbott Christmases and Summers, and then went into their professional development two-year program. And, uh, and so I think I'm going to be probably in Abbott life. I really enjoy Abbott. Um, been there for 17 years now. Um, so, uh, uh, Steph, it's really great to hear your story. Uh, I worked a, a little bit on the, the Gurney site, um, a plant that we built in three months, basically. Uh, pretty amazing for COVID. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I'm glad to be here, part of SWE, and uh, see all these beautiful faces in front of me. So hopefully I'm ready to get started with this. Great, thank you very much. And Caterpillar, Melanie. Hi everyone, um, I'm Melanie Willie. I work for Caterpillar. Um, we are a heavy equipment manufacturer, so we build um, construction equipment. You might see on the side of the, the road all the way up to huge equipment that is bigger than your house that you'll find on a mine site. Um, we also do engine development, transmission development, component development. Um, so lots of uh, interesting problems that we tackle as a company. Um, and really one ultimate goal is just uh, helping you build a better world, right? So the, the things that we do help build infrastructure and, and help uh, build a better society around the world. Um, we have a location in Research Park that is primarily, um, well, we have two facilities. So one is uh, kind of more of like an analysis technology center. And we also have opportunities for students to intern there. I actually started there as a freshman at U of I and I worked there throughout my um, undergrad career um, until I graduated in 2011, working as a design engineer. And then our other facility we opened um, just recently, and it's a data analytics center. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities there for students as well. Um, currently, I am a system integration engineer for the motor grader team. So I have my little Caterpillar Pride shirt on, but um, I tell people what I do is I'm kind of like half referee, half therapist. Um, so I help lead a team of about 50 engineers and help negotiate space for them um, in new product development. So make sure that we're keeping in um, total machine goals and working together well as a team. Great, thank you very much. And Abby, first. Good evening, everyone. Um, nice to see you here. And thank you so much, Swee, for inviting us all in to speak about our companies. I'm Kirsten Phelps. I'm the associate site lead for our site here, um, the Abbey Innovation Center at Research Park. 
Um, AbbVie is a global biopharmaceutical company. So our goal and our mission is to create um, innovative new medicines that have a remarkable impact on our patients' lives. Um, Skyreasy, Humira, and, and recently with the integration with um, Allergan, you might know Botox um, are some of the, the medicines um, that we provide through our company. And at the Innovation Center at Research Park, we support the entire uh, organization. So a lot of the work that we do is within information research that basically uh, supports our R&D. Um, so the scientists, the chemists, the engineers who are working on our medicines all the way from initial um, chemical conception through animal and then clinical trials. A lot of our students are working to support the infrastructure, um, creating dashboards, um, helping to um, support the scientists' uh, scientific collaboration and working together. Um, and so I have a colleague here, uh, Virginia, and I'll let her introduce herself um, as well and to tell a little bit about her background and her role at AbbVie. Thank you. Um, I'm Virginia Saulnier. I am a data scientist at AbbVie. I've been with AbbVie about three years. And my background, I have a bachelor's in biology and bioinformatics and a master's in software engineering. Um, so AbbVie was a really good fit for me for, you know, to combine that, that technical piece with the life science um, capabilities. And my role is really interfacing with scientists to help them uh, visualize and analyze their data. So sometimes it's you know really glamorous technical uh, tool capabilities and development, and sometimes it's you know cleaning and harmonizing data or making sure that we are capturing the data that that we need to capture in a way um, that it is reusable and applicable across ABSI so that we are not losing the valuable information um, that we're generating. And I really, really love working at ABSI. I feel like, um, you know, not only is the work that I'm doing valued, but uh, just me as a person. Um, ABSI just has an amazing community and uh, a support system. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. Great, thank you very much. Um, so I think a lot of you have already kind of addressed our next question. So I might skip this one and kind of move towards the advice that we can provide to some of the students tonight before heading into uh, the breakout rooms. Wanna make sure you all get some, some good, uh, you know, small group time with that, uh, with the students. So can you uh, provide some advice on how students can stand out or make a positive impression on either a resume, during an interview, at a networking event like this. Um, so just kind of what is it your company is looking for or you personally look for when you're, when you're reviewing um, uh, resumes or, or conducting interviews? Or on the flip side of that, what's a red flag that you, you know, that students have done that, you know, kind of, takes them out of the running. So maybe we can start with uh, Melanie at Caterpillar. Uh, sure, I'll, uh, I'll start with the red flags because those are kind of fun. Um, <laughs> so I think that um, I've seen some really creative approaches um, with coming up for with a resume or coming to a career fair and presenting your elevator pitch, including um, I had a duo that wanted to give their elevator pitch together. Um, that was really interesting. Um, you know, I've had um, folks pull out laptops and start to give me presentations at the career fair before. Um, and so for me, I would say that um, really kind of trying to understand that uh, you have a limited amount of time to, to talk to the recruiters and, and trying to make the most of that. And I would say the best way to do that is um, to speak to things that you're passionate about and you're confident um, in your knowledge of. So um, only put things on your resume that you really truly can speak to because a, re a recruiter can pick any of those items to discuss with you and, and you don't wanna kind of be stumped. Um, and then also, um, I really like to tell people to uh, try to practice your elevator pitch or going through your resume out loud with a, a colleague or a friend um, or in the mirror, whatever, because um, I think things always are a little different when you say them in your head 
versus when they come out of your mouth. So really just kind of practice that fluidity. Um, and that kind of helps, you know, exhibit some confidence, exhibit, um, I don't know, put togetherness, I guess. I don't know what word to use for that. Oop. Sorry. <laughs> Great advice. Yeah, no, I've heard that across the board as well. There's there's very limited time at a career fair, so you want to you know make sure that uh, your your pitch makes sense, is connected to the employer to the position. Um, so yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. Um, and Craig, I know that you definitely have had talked about some red flags in the past. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. One of the things I've done this year is I've had some of my interns actually go with me to career fairs and actually interview other students. And you know, it was really interesting from the recent engineering career fair and the Siebel after hours, they were surprised at how many students they talked to that they felt came across as if they didn't even want to be there, almost like their parents forced them to be there. And, um, and, and it was, and I was talking with one of my students tonight and he said, you know, the bar is pretty low on this. <laughs> so I think one thing is when you go, you know, you got to bring your best self, bring your enthusiasm and, you know, just, you know, try to actually present yourself as confidently and as enthusiastically as you can. Remember, you know, the people on the other side, us, you know, it's like, I always call it like speed dating, right? You've got like, you've got five minutes with each person. And so you have to make a quick impression. Um, so that's, that's always one. And then the other thing I always try to talk about is, you know, that's at a career fair. If you're not, if you're sending your resume out, you're not getting hits on your resume. I think the one thing for me is um, I, you know, even if you haven't had um, work experience, you've certainly had project experience. And so put things in your resume that are going to give a recruiter something that they can talk to you about, right? If you've had non-relevant work experience, like if you worked at a fast food place or if you've worked at, you know, um, in retail or something, and you're coming for a software job, I mean, it's great that you have that work ethic, but honestly, it really doesn't give us a lot to talk about. So, but, you know, if you think about your classes, you know, you, you've got a lot of relevant projects, you're, even your MPs, just put those in there because it gives all of us something that we can like, oh, this is something that we can actually talk about and have a conversation with and actually get down to a little bit more brass tacks. So those are two things I have. Great. Greg, then Kirsten, do you have any advice for our audience? Yeah, and I'll, I'll let Virginia um, also share her thoughts. Um, I'll just give, give two um, as well. So one would be, and this is really technical, um, would be, you know, we use Handshake and a lot of companies use Handshake. At Abby, we have a minimum GPA requirement. And if you do not share your GPA, you're automatic, automatically um, shown as disqualified from our list of criteria. So always put your GPA in there. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll go through and double check that someone didn't make it like accidentally get filtered out. Um, but that's just something to know from a student side um, that if, if uh, university, if companies have got that GPA requirement to make sure that you um, that you put that in your handshake profile. Um, the second thing, and this kind of gets to, to, to Craig's comment as well, um, is um, particularly for interviews, even if you be prepared to know how to talk through how you would approach a problem. Um, we hire a lot of students at AbbVie and, you know, sometimes we'll ask questions in the interviews where we're, we're not expecting you to know the answer, but we want to know how you would approach potentially solving it. Um, so if you can talk through your thought process and share with us what you consider, what you wouldn't consider, how you think you might approach it and engage in that dialogue and show us um, a little bit of your skills in terms of problem solving and critical thinking, that's really important. Um, and sometimes even more so than, than having the quote unquote right answer. Um, Abby, as Virginia had alluded to, is very collaborative um, and you will work cross-functionally with a lot of different people. And so being able to explain your ideas and concepts is very important. So something else that I would share just to practice, um, particularly if you're utilizing projects or uh, machine problems from classes is be able to talk through you know, what you were given and then what you contributed to that project. And then I'll turn it over to Virginia to share her thoughts as well. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, speak to the, the fact that we're doing video interviews now. Um, and one thing I think that has been happening lately is, you know, you're in your bedroom and you're kind of just like hanging out. Um, sometimes people can look really unenthusiastic um, just because we're so comfortable in our own space, I, I feel like. So um, when you are interviewing over a, a Zoom camera, I would say 
remember your posture, you know, try to convey interest and, um, you know, just, just remember that, that the person is like seeing you. Um, prepare some questions to ask. It shows that, that you are interested. Um, and I think that that is an area where you can show a little more personality, um, where you can be a little, a little unique in those, give the interviewer something to remember. Um, and uh, wait, I had one more thought. Oh, no, no, the, the role description. Um, I recently interviewed someone and asked the question, um, you know, what, what interested you about this role? And um, they gave a great response, but none of the things were from the actual uh, job description. So, um, you know, that, that kind of tells me that you were just maybe mass emailing out your resume and not actually super interested in, in that particular role, so. Right, thank you very much. Yeah, and we, we hear all the time that it, the, the generic mass, uh, emails and spamming of your resume, kind of, the employers can tell if, if it just is going out to everyone because there's either not matching up to the position or it doesn't even match, it doesn't match anything. I always say as students, I'm sure you have received a lot of generic emails from employers and you can tell when it's generic and I'm sure you don't, you kind of ignore those as well because you're like, oh, this is just going out to everyone. So on the same same uh, side of the you know that coin, make sure that you are definitely matching things up. And um, I've also heard several times uh, what Kristen said about making sure that you are able to explain your thought process. And that's important communication overall. That's always important because if you can't explain your ideas to somebody, then you are the only person that knows <laughs> knows that idea. And that's not going to help anybody except maybe your project might get done, but then it just stays kind of with you. So make sure that you're able to uh, explain and thought process and all of that piece. So these are all great pieces of advice. And something just with Research Park, I think is unique too. And you know, maybe uh, going to career fairs and meeting recruiters that you are uh, getting to build a relationship with. That GPA, I know that there was um, one site manager who said a, a student had approached her and at that time, his GPA did not meet their criteria, but she said, if you, uh, they had a really great conversation and she said, if you get your GPA up to our minimum next semester, I will, or whenever that happens, I'll guarantee you a spot in our internship program. And he came next time with, uh, next semester with his transcript, had raised his GPA and she gave him an internship. So, you know, there's really a lot of opportunity here to build um, relationships and to really, um, you know, have a lot of touch points with these companies. Like you'll see Craig and you'll see Kirsten and Tim, the site managers who are here, boots on the ground, and they can connect you with all of their colleagues as well. Um, so it's really interesting um, and a great resource that we have here. Um, Tim from Ampit, any other additions? Yeah, well, I mean, you kind of heard it, but um, I definitely think, especially when Search Park. I've had, like you said, I've had people can tell it's just a generic, like they're applying to everything. Like I might put out five uh, positions and I'll get them applying to every single one and they don't really match any of that. So make sure you're, you know, kind of matching up what, what you really want to do and target it. And then the other thing I know just from my, from myself, especially in an interview, one of the hardest things is to sometimes maybe talk about yourself and take credit for stuff you've done. Don't be afraid to say, I led this, or like if you worked on a project, don't say, I worked on a project, say say what you did on the project and, and highlight your, that's a part of it. Um, and I know early in my career, that was one of the things when I would go for positions, I would always say, I was on a team and I got told finally, you know, well, you never led it. And I said, well, I did, but there was other people on it, but highlight what you do. I mean, that's, that's what the interview's for, right? Is to highlight yourself. And I know sometimes that can be difficult. I don't know if uh, Zinya or Steph, you wanna add anything? I guess the only thing I would add is um, like with not applying to all the roles and really tailoring what you want, um, 
don't be afraid to apply to roles that you're a little unsure about. Um, that's like a big thing. Like if you don't feel like you're qualified, well, maybe the next year you will be. And now you've already had practice with that interview. So um, like on the opposite end, obviously don't apply to everything, but don't be afraid to apply to um, roles that you're not 100% sure about yet because you might find out that you love it. Thank you, Steph. Um, and you know, really, when we're looking for the internships, you're you're you don't really know the role that you're going into, um, but it could be a company or a business that um, you don't really know if the chemical engineer is going to fit in that environment. What do you know they do? Um, so. You know, Tim kind of stole some of my thunder there, exactly what I wanted to say. Um, but I do pay attention to the eyes and the wheeze, and I look for a balance of that in the conversation. Many times when I hear somebody talk about, you know, they went on to the vomit comet and they were part of that team. Well, I was part of that team when I was in college, and I know there's some wallflowers and there's some people that really dive in and do that work. So I'm going to ask you, what exactly did you do? Um, and I'm looking for a straight answer uh, and eye contact as well. Um, and, and a little bit of a smile. So be engaged uh, in there and, and do a little bit of research because when people come into an interview and they say, so what does Abbott do? I'm kind of like, really? <laughs> so, you know, that, that level of interest and that level of pre-work tells me how you're going to be a little bit as an intern, right? Um, so I think that means a lot, just a little bit of effort on that part. Um, just don't show up, you know, with, with a, a nice, nice uh, blazer and jogging pants underneath, right? <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you all. That was, yeah, that was a lot of really great advice there. And um, just again, another research park reminder is that if there are five positions for that company posted, it's gonna probably go to that one person. So if you are sending that same resume for each one and it doesn't, it kind of fits each one, they're gonna see that you have done that. So um, it is not necessarily going out to different departments and, and that, but um, all right. So thank you all so much for all of the great advice.